It has been sleeting here in the Nashville area nonstop since 430. This is going to be the problem. As we come down here, you can see thick ice covering the roadways. Still many without power this morning. Let me show you why. As we walk over here, you see this utility pole lying in the parking lot. They say they heard a loud boom and then a huge explosion, a fireball. Take a look at the scene right now. It's probably difficult for you guys to hear, but we are hearing several loud popping noises. You can see directly under this overpass here. You're hearing the sirens. You're seeing what the flames look like. There. I'm surprised in your old age you can see these. Oh. Though. <laughs> I mean, aren't they a little? <laughs> I don't know how that works. Nicely done. If only they were red, we could do a little bull race. <laughs> we're standing here at the back of this house, a little bit different view for you this morning. And as I walk over here, you can see what appears to be a deck just lying against this car right here. I have in my hand the rap sheet of Stephanie Ferguson. It goes on for pages, as you can see. I'm, I'm innocent. I ain't got nothing to do with this. Do police have the wrong person in custody? Yes, sir. But it was no doubt a violent night in Nashville. The first shooting happened here at the intersection of Horton Avenue and 14th Avenue South. I'm running. This awesome. is about all the running you're going to see me do all weekend. I can tell you that. It is a party out here. The energy is so palpable. You can feel it in the runners. You can feel it from the spectators. Let me show you what it looks like here. It is just a sea of excitement. Right over here where I'm standing, you have a lot of cinder blocks that have been just kind of tossed aside. There was a wall standing right here, and you can see that the storm, the high winds pretty much pushed this wall all the way over here. And as I'm walking over here, too, you can see there's some tin right here as well. This was pretty much ripped off from the roof of this home. Gunshots outside the Carmike Hickory 8 movie theater sent people running. Metro and prompted this frightening 911 phone call. He pulled out a like a hatchet and started attacking this family, and then he pulled out a gun, and we all ran out of the theater. We now know that hatchet-wielding attacker was 29-year-old Vincente Montano. Police say he went after a family of three with pepper spray, and then hit the father in the shoulder with this hatchet. Nobody has been transported. There have been no. Um, uh, trauma injuries at this point, um, and we're very thankful for that. Officer Jonathan Frith was the first one into the theater to take on the attacker, who authorities say threatened Frith with this pellet gun. All of this as dozens sat inside and outside the theater, wondering when this frightening ordeal would end. The SWAT team came in, heard them all yelling, and they were, went that direction over there. Bunch of guns went off. We were just terrified. We were trying to stay as quiet as possible, and we were just trying to figure out what we would actually do if he came in the room. As Montano tried to escape out of the back of the theater, five officers opened fire, killing him, ending the latest attack on a movie theater and leaving a community wondering why it happened here. A giant blast of Arctic air is spreading across more than half of the country. From Iowa to Pennsylvania to Tennessee, people are facing single-digit temperatures. Even Florida is in the 30s, and it will be even colder tomorrow. Cut Berth Langley of CBS affiliate WTVF is in Nashville, where temperatures fell to around zero overnight. Cut Berth, good morning. Good morning. It's been snowing here in Nashville for the last several hours. In fact, this is the slowest it has been all morning long. Kentucky just announcing that they have received a near record amount of snowfall, all while nearly 59,000 people across the state of Tennessee are without power. Through piling snow, crews across the south are racing to clear roads that have been iced over by the blistering cold. It's going to turn into black ice and you won't be able to tell where it's slick. I plan to be inside by that point. In Franklin, Tennessee, several cars and trucks spun out of control, <laughs> trying to avoid an accident in front of them. The deep freeze turned deadly after an 18-wheeler struck and killed 34-year-old Christy Clark and her 10-year-old son. The two had stopped to help people inside of an overturned SUV on the side of the interstate. Throughout the region, slick, snow-covered streets have made driving dangerous and resulted in at least nine deaths. Pull yourself up. Come on. Farther north in Kentucky, rescue crews responded to a call for a dog that had actually fallen through an icy lake. As we were responding, we were updated that there was two people now in the water, which changes the game a little bit. A couple had fallen into the freezing water trying to save their dog. Firefighters were able to pull them to safety, but not their pet. Standing nearby, Nicole Young grabbed a kayak from her apartment and helped to rescue the stranded animal. I just paddled over to the dog, grabbed her collar, and then got her up on the nose of the boat. We had a rope um, attached to her kayak, and once she got the dog, we pulled her in. 
Back in Tennessee, utility crews are desperately trying to restore power for thousands as the temperature threatens to plunge to record lows. This is a look of Interstate 65 heading out of the city of Nashville. You can see how slick the roadways are. The ice was better yesterday afternoon, but with the snow this morning, we are expecting travel conditions to worsen. This while Nashville schools are actually closed for the rest of the week, and Tennessee is still under a state of an emergency. And as if things couldn't get worse, forecasters are predicting more snow later this week. Gail? Oh, that's the last thing anybody wants to hear. Thank you, Cuthbert. Nashville firefighters arrived to flames ripping through the Eden's Gardens apartment complex and calls for help. And there was a young girl there yelling, my grandma, my grandma's in there. Oh and the crew from Engine 25 ran up the stairs, plunged into the apartment where the fire was the heaviest and searched for her. They couldn't even see, so they had to feel around the living room. They pulled the well-known grandmother out of her burning home as paramedics rushed to save her, all while the family stood by. <laughs> Motion as obvious as the damage to the building. Dozens of residents, some crutching their children, stood by witnessing emotion while realizing they lost something too. I was in the apartment, lights off, uh, fan on, you smell smoke. What do you do? It's dark. What do you grab? Justin Jarrett had no choice but to grab what little he could. After watching the fire spread to his apartment, destroying everything he has, he now holds on to a newfound perspective. I look at it like I lost uh, my apartment, but I'm still here. You know, she, she lost her life. Well, more than a dozen animals died after fire ripped through an animal sanctuary in Dalton. The flames broke out around 3 o'clock this morning in the laundry room of the building there. And as News Channel 5's Cuthbert Langley shows us, it quickly turned into a heartbreaking scene. Through tears this morning, volunteers here at Walden's Puddle have been working around the clock, working to give these animals who were given a second chance another chance to survive as a fire ripped through perhaps the most critical building here at the facility. There are plenty of signs of life at Walden's Puddle, but now there are signs of panic as volunteers struggle to give these animals another shot. That's tragic. I've been I've been crying. I can't cry anymore right now. I just have to do the job of putting it back together now. We've got animals that need us. This lively sanctuary. You can see the, the soot on the floor. Is now punctuated by gray debris and raw emotion. <laughs> Because those babies couldn't run, they couldn't flee, not that any, many of them could, they were just infants. As summer's cruel heat beats down on the animals, man-made air conditioners help add seconds to the lives of the animals who did survive. It is truly about the animals, you know, the call of duty, if you will. So often in the troubled times of tragedy, we see the contagious act of community. Today was no different. Just stopped and pulled up and came right on inside and said, you know what, I don't have a whole lot, but I have $129 in my wallet and I'd like you to have it. And so it was amazing, absolutely amazing. For an organization that gives second chances, there is an optimistic feeling of strength as this organization gets their second chance at life. It seems like we're kind of like the resilient one. We're kind of like the rocky of the wildlife. You know, it seems like every time we get knocked down, we come back bigger and stronger. 